America. What do you love best? Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. What was that again? We love baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Oh. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. That's baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet, huh? Baseball and hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Hey, what's going on, sports cards fans? Ray from Philly here. It is one day away from the start of the 2024 MLB season. And I'm joined by Mike Ode, who's we're going to talk about the upcoming season for the Phils, what our expectations are, our hopes. And when we're done with that, we'll briefly go over the other divisions and see how the league is going to pan out this year. I'm so excited. We're less than 24 hours away from the start of another MLB season. Mike, what's going on, man? How you doing? What's up, Ray? Uh, one of the great days of the year. You know, you have some great yeah. days of the year, right? You got like, it depends what you like. You got Christmas, great day of the year. You got, <laughs> you know, maybe the 4th of July, maybe you like grilling in the summertime. But right up there, right at the top of the list, opening day of baseball season. Yeah. Uh, whether your team's playing or not, if you're a big time baseball fan, just having meaningful games on, seeing everyone, and really, as we'll discuss, everyone has no wins, no losses. Everyone's in it. No one's eliminated. Yeah. Certainly expectations are higher for some teams than other teams, but it is always a great day. It's super exciting. And uh, I'm fired up for the season. Fired up for the Phillies because, let's face it, um, if things go the way we think they can go, uh, this team is constructed to compete for a World Series. They have an opportunity to not only reach the postseason, but to once again – hopefully play deep and just generally baseball is awesome. I mean, it's just so fun to watch. There's so many good young players. There's still um, a ton of stars in this league and yep. journey begins six months of baseball regular season before we uh, see how things wrap up. So can't wait. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an, it's a long grind and that's, what's great about baseball. And tomorrow I'm actually off from work tomorrow. A lot of people, you know, there's certain days of the year, like the first day of the NCAA tournament, round one, a lot of people take off. I'm off tomorrow. I Even though the Phillies game has been pushed back to Friday, I'm going to be watching all the other games tomorrow. It's like it's you know, for myself and you and Ed Wesker Griff, who couldn't be here with us tonight. Uh, it's a big day for us. You know, it's like it's it, it, you said it, it's like Christmas Day. I mean, I can't wait. It's a long season, but. This is why we collect baseball cards, like Ed said, and why we do what we do is because we love this game, and uh, it's just a great game. Yeah, but, and it's what makes it exciting. It makes it yeah. collecting exciting, too, because like you, I also love players of the past. I love the history of the game, um, going all the way back to its inception, but – not only do I love that, I love to see what story is happening now, what's coming up next. So it's it's so fun to follow. I mean, it's the real reality TV. It's, you know, kind of the original <laughs> reality TV is, you know, you watch a game, you might have thoughts of what might happen, but you don't really know exactly how things play out. And that's why we watch. So right. it's uh it's all sorts of exciting and I'm uh I'm fired up. So let's yeah. uh let's talk yeah, about so it a little bit. Right, so now the Phillies, we're going to start off with our nemesis, the Atlanta Braves, this weekend. So uh, real quick, we I guess we could start with the, the pitching, okay? So uh, we got back Aaron Nola this year. Our ace is going to be Zach Wheeler. Number two is going to be Nola. Three is going to be Suarez. Four is going to be Sanchez. Five was going to be Taiwan Walker, but I think they're saying it's they're going to be using um, Spencer Turnbull. And the bullpen, I actually am kind of, I actually like the bullpen. I, they don't have a, a, a lockdown closer, but I think they're going to rotate, rotate between Sir Anthony Dominguez and Alvarado. I really like Jeff Hoffman in the bullpen. Uh, Soto's is, I think he had a up and down year last year. I think he's got to have a better year and I think he's very capable of doing that. And I like Matt Strom. So uh, what are your thoughts on the pitching? Like, what do you think about Orion Kirkering and this guy Marte? And uh, are you worried about Taiwan Walker? I mean, he's had a pretty bad spring so far. Yeah, I mean, Taiwan Walker was, you know, one of the mistakes of the Dombrowski area, uh, yeah. era so far. Now, granted, he still has three years left on his contract, so maybe he puts together some big seasons, but it's it's looking like a rough contract. They ended up, unfortunately, giving him about twice as much, 
guaranteed money as Zach Eflin got, who they had. Uh, Eflin will now be opening day starter with the Tampa Bay Rays. He had an excellent season last year. I think he was top three in the Cy Young voting, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I would have preferred to have just kept him at the low lower salary number, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, he has shoulder discomfort, shoulder soreness. Uh, we'll see. They said he's probably going to miss, you know, a couple weeks. Who knows if that's something that lingers. Spencer Turnbull, you know, this guy's had success in the big leagues before, threw a no-hitter a couple years ago, then, of course, um, had surgery like so many of these pitchers do. He did look pretty good in the uh, in spring training. So, you know, I feel okay with him starting the year as the five spot. You can always improve later in the year if you have to. But one through four, I think, looks pretty solid. Obviously, Wheeler's been incredible the last few years, so hopefully he keeps that up. Nola, he's one of those guys I actually think – Having that contract being settled in is probably going to do him good. Um, so we'll see. He's obviously been a workhorse. And Ranger Suarez, he's one of those guys who is actually still pitching for a future contract. You know, he's going to mm-hmm. be coming up on uh, arbitration and, you know, eventually either getting an extension in Philadelphia or having his opportunity to explore his marketplace. And he's been so good. If he can stay healthy, I mean, he could be an excellent three. So I, I really do like the rotation and the bullpen. Uh, is, you know, the bullpen in 2020 was, I believe, statistically the worst bullpen in baseball history, and that cost the Phillies a postseason spot in that first year of very expanded playoffs. And it's amazing how much they've turned it around in four years. Their bullpen, on paper, and based on recent success, you know, is look looks really strong, and I believe it was voted by it was e- either ESPN or MLB.com. One of them is the top bullpen in baseball. So yeah. we'll see if that plays out. They just they have a lot of guys with live arms. They have a lot of guys with good stuff. I would feel a little better if they did have a lockdown closer. Now I wouldn't be the type to go out and give a hundred million dollars to a guy to be the closer because other than a handful of guys, really usually closers don't do it kind of extremely consistently you know especially over a long term and older guys you start to worry about Mm -hmm. but you know i think they'll find their spot and you know obviously they like to mix things up but i i do like the arms in the bullpen a guy like junior Marte, who you mentioned he had ups and downs last year but that guy has electric stuff like he is the type of stuff that he could have a monster year he's the type of guy who could end up with like a 185 era and end up being a key part of the bullpen getting big outs or you know he might be wild and not figure it out we'll see but they have additional arms um in the minor leagues orion kirkring is not going to start the year with the big league club he had right he was sick during the big portion of uh preseason so he's going to start off uh rehabbing and then end up uh, in lehigh valley a little bit stretch out and eventually be up i mean he obviously is young and has great stuff as well so I mean, I, I like the pitching staff mm-hmm. uh, along Dem- along with a solid lineup, and that's why our expectations are so high for this team. And Dominguez, you know, two years ago in 22, the year we went to the World Series, he looked lights out, you know, and, and last yeah, he year. Was, he was awesome in the postseason. Was, so if we can get him back to 2022, man, I mean, I don't know what happened last year. He was very inconsistent. I think um, he might be one of those every other year type of relievers because he was re- he was he was really <laughs> yeah. good in 2019. Then he was hurt, and then like you said, awesome in 2022, and kind of like seemed like a lost cause in 2023. And you know, yeah, he's one of those guys. Like he is capable of coming in, striking out the side, and making it look really easy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if he's right. And we have Sanchez who. Uh, put on 10 pounds of muscle this year. Uh, he added a cutter. Now I know he got lit up in what, two starts ago, but um, he's a ground ball pitcher. I'm hoping that um, he, I, I know what to expect from Wheeler and Nola and Ranger, but that I'm looking at Sanchez because I think he could be a pretty important key cog in there. And then we got the guy down in the, in the minors with Abel that maybe in May they'll bring him up and could be a nice surprise addition this year. So we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, At some point, I think we'll see Mick Abel make his major league debut this year. Yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to that's that. That's always fun. Now, let's go to the lineup now to the uh, infield. Harper, as you know, as everyone knows now, is the everyday first baseman. And he is such a good athlete that he just he could, you could probably play him anywhere and he'll do 
well because he's just an overall good athlete. Uh, Bryson Stott, a rookie last year, showed really good numbers last year. Uh, this is the second year. Hope he doesn't have a sophomore jinx. I think he's just going to get better. Trey Turner at shortstop, as we all know, first four months of the year last year was pretty bad. And then in August, after that standing ovation, you know, from then on, he he played like how we were expecting to see him play. Castellanos in the outfield. And you saw with Castellanos, his first year in Philadelphia, he had a bad year. It's a big adjustment going to Philadelphia. And then you saw Castellanos last year make the all-star team. So I'm hoping that Trey Turner has that same kind of luck this year. And I really do think he will. I think he's more relaxed. The fans like him, you know, and he likes being here. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I think Turner is going to have a, a major bounce back year. Yeah, I mean, I like the lineup overall. And, I, you know, another thing that I don't think the average fan – necessarily even thinks about the defense I believe is significantly improved over you know three four years ago they were like the worst defense huh. in the league and they've gotten better and last year I don't know how they were statistically they probably were in the bottom of third but they're continuing to improve I mean Bryce Harper at first base he was excellent when he played there last year and with more work I suspect he'll get better and you know will he be a gold glove first baseman I don't know about that but I think he'll make all the plays yeah. and have a little more range. Bryson and he Stott, hustles. Yeah. Bryson start stop arguably could have won the gold yeah. glove award last year. Yep. So, I mean, you're strong at second base, the center fielder, it's going to be key as to whether he can hit mm -hmm. enough to stay in the big leagues. But that guy has a chance to be a big time difference maker defensively. Mm -hmm. I mean, his sabermetric stats were like off the chart. He is like, he has a chance to be an all-time great defensive center fielder. Now, that's saying a lot. You have to do it for a certain amount of time. But Johan right. Ro Rojas is a gifted center fielder. Um, even Castellanos, he doesn't have the greatest range. But but he, he held make, it down. He held the down. I don't think he's down. made an error as a Philly. So he's no. gotten it done. Getting Schwarber out of left field is huge. P putting him at DH. That way you have Brandon Marsh, who was an adequate center fielder. I wouldn't say he was elite, but he was – he looked amazing after the years we dealt with Aduba Herrera and some of those other goofballs mm -hmm. they've had out in center <laughs> field. So, but having him in left is a massive upgrade. And then Bohm has continued to improve. He had the struggles yeah. coming up, but he's defensively made a lot of, he's a really lot of good. Plays. And Turner, Turner has the capability of being good, but he just last year took his offensive woes to the field and struggled a lot. So he, he might be the weakest link defensively, but it doesn't mean he can't make the plays. We saw he made an amazing double play in a key moment against the Braves in the division series yeah. last year. And, of course, Real Muto, a catcher, um, you know, he's won gold gloves. He throws out runners. He does a great job. So I like the defense. And, obviously, of all the guys I mentioned, they're all guys who can hit. You know, some of them may be streaky, but other than Rojas, who had an okay regular season for the Phillies, now, he did have a lot of maybe lucky base hits when you're watching, and his first career home run did come off a position player, but he has the capability to be an adequate hitter. He needs to make the adjustments. He's going to need to learn to bunt, leg out, make, you know, find a way to get on base, be, uh, be selective at the plate, you know, use right. his legs. But I mean, otherwise, the lineup, I mean, even a Brandon Marsh is probably going to hit eighth, and like that guy is put up like an 800 OPS since the Phillies acquired him. He struggled offensively with the angels, right. but he's really turned it around. He's oh, big time. improving against lefties. So, I mean, I like him a lot. Castellanos, obviously he's a hot and cold guy. We saw that in the postseason, but obviously he can be an offensive force. Stott, right. you know, can be a 300 hitter. He's continuing to develop. Real Muto has been fantastic during spring training. I know he's made adjustments. The question with him, and you obviously want to get him some rest. You don't want him to wear down as the season goes on. But, I mean, he's obviously been really good. And then Bohm, I don't think a lot of people think of Alec Bohm as a big-time offensive player, but he did lead the team in RBIs last year. He's mm -hmm. one of the more consistent offensive performers. I'd like to see his home run total maybe inch up a little bit more this right. year. And then, I mean, Harper's a future Hall of Famer. Trey Turner, I agree. 
can easily have a bounce back year. If he can put together six solid months, this is a guy who can hit 300 and maybe flirt with a 30, 30 season. It's definitely a possibility. Well, he's done and then, that. Yeah. And yeah. then we've got your boy, one of your all time favorites, Kyle Schwarber. Um, <laughs> you know, he might strike out 200 times and hit 220, but based on his first two years in Philadelphia, you can only hope he on hits 40 220. <laughs> Well, you missed one guy that, I mean, we talk, well, going back to Marsh, uh, do you think that they're going to split time with him and Merrifield in left field? I think they. I think you're going to see a lot of Merrifield uh, well, I, going I think against uh, lefties and Marsh think, against righties. Yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility. Plus, I think you'll see Marsh play some games in center field, maybe against certain pitchers. Right. Um, specifically, maybe some of the nasty right-handed pitchers sometimes. I, I think you will see – Marsh play left and center, and I see think you'll see Merrifield play left, and then occasionally at second base, and you know maybe spot a game at right at uh, you know first or short or wherever they need him. But you know Whit Merrifield, like you said, is another addition, a professional hitter, a guy yeah. who's led the league in hits multiple times, and uh, you know he was awesome in spring training. Which it's spring training, you can only take from it what you're going to take from it but this is a guy who actually had a really strong season last year you look at his numbers and they don't look as good as he played the majority of the season he really struggled um late in the year and i can't remember if you know some of the thought was uh you know playing through some injury and stuff like that but if you can mix up and use them just enough. I mean, he could easily be a great addition. Yeah, kind of I mean, super just... utility slash everyday type yeah. of player. That just improved your bench because their bench was – I didn't like their bench at all last year. And he just improved your bench immensely. Um, I mean, if he gets 200 at-bats, 250 at-bats, and he's a, he's the kind of hitter that I like, which is a, a, a spray hitter. He's a great contact hitter. He's going to give you a professional at-bat. And who knows? You know, he might be a bigger part than we might think. You know, if I think it's going to matter between Johan Rojas. If he struggles offensively, you might see Marsh more frequently in center and Merrifield an everyday left fielder. So I think Merrifield's play time is going to depend on Rojas. And I think they're going to give Rojas maybe two months to see if he can hit, you know, April and May. And if he's not, you know, they'll, they could send him down and then you might have every day as Marsh and Merrifield, which I'm okay with. But yeah. like you said, defensively, Rojas, you know, is, is really, really good defensively. He, he can save you games, uh, especially defense up the middle. You, you need a goal golf catcher, which we have. Stott's good. Turner is average. And then you have that goal glove type of defense in the center field. Really solidifies your defense uh, when you have that up the middle. But we'll yeah, see. I think that's going to be the key is Marsh, Rojas, and Whit Merrifield, those three guys. Yeah, and I think they like whatever mix they do, I think they like that they have eight strong hitters that they feel good about. And that's why they feel like they can yeah. get away with Rojas a little bit. And if, you know, he could hit 250, it's possible he makes mm -hmm. his improvements. He might struggle. Now, if he's hitting around 200 and at least getting on base a little bit, I think they'll live with that. You know, if he's playing phenomenal defense and of course you can always pinch hit late in the game if you need it, you know, it's a matter of, you can't have him hitting. 140 150 that's really no, run no. into a problem but right. we'll we'll see how that develops obviously in today's game with the dh in both leagues your bench your bench is still incredibly important because you're gonna have injuries guys need days off but it's not quite as important as it was a few years ago where you needed pinch hitters every game and mm -hmm. stuff and now you have a small bench you have a backup catcher which is obviously a necessity um mm -hmm. you know you got the two outfielders and um you know, one guy who can kind of play everywhere in the infield. So, well, the the lineup I heard, I and if this is true, I'll be happy with it. I think they're finally moving for the regular season Schwarber out of the leadoff spot, which I mean, I really hate it. I don't hate Schwarber. I like him as he's a power hitter. He's a fun guy, good guy, good in the locker room. But he, I just didn't like him leading off because. Yeah, he'll hit 40 bombs for you, but you got to, people have to understand that there's going to be nobody on base. There's going to be a lot of solo homers. Um, he's he's not going to get on base, even with, he might get on with a walk, but he's not going to hit any singles. He's not going to advance anybody who's on. If that's, he does, that's not true, right? He, he had, you know, 50, <laughs> he had 50 singles last year. That's 50s more than none. 
If he gets on base, though, it could take two or three batters to get him home. You know, I mean, I think he he's a power hitter. He needs to be like four, five, six. And I'd rather see him hit those 40 bombs with one or two guys on. I'll be way more accepting of him hitting 180 if he hits 35 to 43 homers and he'll have more RBIs. That, to me, would be more productive to use him there. But I think they said they're going to use Stott leading off, Turner batting second, uh, Harper third, Real Muto fourth. I think uh, Castellanos will be fifth, Bohm sixth. Um, Rojas ninth, and I'm missing two guys. Um, well, Schwerber, I think, will probably be fifth. Castellanos, six. Uh, yeah, um, what's his seventh. name? Your boy Mark Topper eight. loves the left-right thing, no matter what. Yeah, and I understand that. I mean, to me, I just go with whoever's going to do the job at that position, no matter. I mean, if you can hit, you can hit lefties or righties. Shouldn't matter. But in today's game, that's a lot of analytics. So, uh, so. What is your prediction on the Phils this year? I, last year they had 90 wins. They, the year before when they went to the World Series, 87 wins. Last year, three wins. Improvement. What is your thoughts on the overall performance on the team this year? I mean, I think they are – I think mentally they really want to win the division. I really do. I think it's going to be tough because I do think the Braves are very good. Um, obviously, the Phillies can play with the Braves. We've seen that the last two Octobers. Um, I think the Phillies are every bit as good when it comes head to head. The Braves have had the upper hand against, you know, head to head in the regular season. The Phillies have beat them in the playoffs. Um, I do think the Phillies will improve. I, you know, I think, I really think this year they're geared up to win about 95 games or so. Of course, you know, one hot streak, one cold streak can change that. I mean, you think back to 2011, the Phillies best regular season, um, in their team history, they won 102, mm -hmm. but a lot of people forget late in the year after they clinched, they lost seven games in a row before yeah, winning did. the last three, which unfortunately helped the Cardinals make the playoffs, which cost us. But, you know, if they would have won two or, you know, next thing you know, you're looking at 104, 105, which looks a lot different than 102. But I think they're about a 95 win team. I really do think, you know, the Dodgers, you got to put them kind of at the top based on everything they have, though. We'll see how things work out ultimately. I think them and the Braves are, you know, the top two, and the Phillies are right there as the third best team in the National League. Now, there's a lot of other really good teams. Obviously, Arizona just improved again yesterday, and they've gained a lot of uh, confidence with their run last year, and they have a lot of young talent. But yeah, I think the Phillies are right there. I think the division, it, the division doesn't even matter as much now in terms of playing them because you play everyone equally. So. Yeah, I think I, I have the Phillies are right around that. And last year they had 90 wins. I could see them getting 94. And I mean, I mean the Phillies are a playoff built team. They play better in the playoffs. We've seen that the past two years. They're not a long stretch regular season team. They've gotten off to slow starts. Now, if they get off to a good start this year, they could rack up in the high 90s. But they've historically, the past couple of years, have gotten off to Schwarber is doesn't play until June. You know, he doesn't start hitting bombs until June. And they have gotten off to a slow start. But this team is a playoff built team. So I if, that being said, I do have Atlanta winning the division and I have the Phillies finishing second. Um after that, I mean I have Washington, the Mets in Florida. And I think Washington's gonna surprise a couple people, good young players moving up. But I think the Phillies are going to make the wild card, and I think they're in the Braves' heads. It's not being a homer or overconfident. I just think that that lineup of the Braves is phenomenal. The, everybody's predicting they're going to win over 100 games, and they probably will. I could see them winning 102 pretty easy, you know. Uh, but come playoff time, I don't know. I think – the Phillies are in their heads, and the Phillies, they turn it on in the playoffs, and they play much better in the playoffs. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to come down to health as well because the Braves, too, yeah. the Braves, I mean, if you look at it, and obviously they're phenomenal, but, like, almost everybody in their lineup had the best season in their career last year, and that is hard to duplicate um, when you look at even past teams. Um, 
you know, I'm just thinking of even some Phillies teams. It usually doesn't happen for every guy two years in a row. Not to say it couldn't or that they're not capable of it, but like their offense was historically great last year. Now their rotation is also really strong. Max Freed contract year. So obviously he'll be focused. Strider's obviously amazing. And he actually pitches incredibly well against the Phillies outside of the postseason. Um, and Chris Sale, again, question mark, but he's a guy who's capable, if healthy, of winning like 18 games. So, I mean, yeah. the Braves have a good rotation. They have a solid bullpen. I do like the Braves also to win the division, but I, I give the Phillies a fighting chance. Like absolutely. I think it's absolutely capable. I think the Phillies, if everything goes right, could win triple digits. I, I think it's absolutely possible. I have the Mets right now as the third team. I don't think they're going to be great, but I don't think they're going to be terrible. I actually kind of like their lineup a little bit. Now, things could change if they fall out of it. They might start moving some pieces. A guy like Pete Alonso is a free agent after the yeah. season, so we have to see how that works out. Their pitching is incredibly questionable, starting and the bullpen, but uh, I do like their lineup quite a bit as of now. Um, I think – I probably would still have the Marlins four, Nationals five, but I do like the Nationals. I think they're doing a really good job of putting yeah. together a good young team. I just still think they're a couple years away. The Marlins have a good amount of talent. They're just – they're going to struggle. They still have a lot of good arms in the rotation, in the bullpen, but, I mean, they're down Alcantara for the year, and then Yuri Perez, who's mm. really good, he's going to miss time to start the year, so – I don't know if they have quite the depth, but they do have a lot of good pieces um, mm -hmm. pitching wise. So that's kind of the way I see the division playing out. And the NL Central, this is my first shocker type of team. I guess it's really not a shocker team because the division is up for up for grabs. A lot of people, I think, are going to go with Chicago. I'm going with the Cincinnati Reds. Um, I don't know. I think Ellie De La Cruz and the rest of that team, I think they're going to pull it off and um, – I think Milwaukee, I have them dead last. They lost Corbin Burns. They do have Reese Hoskins. I can't believe it. Uh, but there's something about losing Corbin Burns and the rest of that pitching staff kind of irks me. Chicago, I have them fourth. I have St. Louis third. And, I, and you know, Don Phil the Dream is going to be happy here. But I think he's going to have a nice year this year with the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think O'Neill Cruz with a full year. I don't have them getting into playoffs or winning the division. But I think they can finish second or third between them and St. Louis. And I have the Reds finishing, winning that division. What do you I think about it. Cincinnati? Yeah, I can see Cincinnati is not a bad it, team. You know, it's possible. It's, the Central is always, I think both Central divisions are probably the most intriguing of the divisions. Yeah. Because I don't think they're teams that are going to necessarily run away with things. And I think there's a lot of teams that could compete. I do like the Reds a lot. Um, the Cardinals, the Cardinals do have a lot of talent. Uh, some young guys and the veterans, they got the Goldschmidt's and Arenados, and then the young guys like Dylan Carlson and Jordan Walker and such. Um, the question mark will be whether their pitching staff can do enough. I know they added a few veteran arms, but like the Cardinals are one of those teams that just seem to always be good. The Cardinals and, are the Cardinals, yeah. And they, and they had that down year last year, which kind of came as a surprise. A lot of people had them as uh, they'll probably win the division by default. And they, they really were pretty bad the majority of the year. So mm -hmm. I, I expect them to bounce back. Whether it's enough to win the division, I don't know. But I'd right. be kind of shocked if they're not an 82 to 85 win team. Uh, I think the Cubs have a lot of talent, so I think they'll be in the race. I do like the Reds. Um, they're just loaded with offensive yeah. talent. Um, again, with them, it will be a, can they pitch enough? Can they pitch consistently? They're going to rely on a lot of young arms uh, pitching-wise. Of course, the Brewers are another team. They've just been there year in and year out. They added a veteran leader like Reese Hoskins. They still have a Christian Yelich, of Jackson Churio, who you know is a Could win rookie of the year. potential rookie of the year candidate. So they're they're improving their offense a little bit. Sam Frelick had uh, some good moments last year, but can they pitch enough? Obviously, right. they moved on from Corbin Burns, who's been a rock in their rotation. Brandon Woodruff is hurt. You know. We'll just see if the guys can step up and do enough. I agree the Pirates are improved. Now, they were sensational the first month and a half last year, and then they just kind of hit a wall and really sputtered badly. Mm -hmm. But O'Neill Cruz back this year, he just killed it during spring training. So, I mean, he's a potential face of the franchise type of guy. The pitcher schemes. Yeah, and he'll be up, I would think, in May, and that will be exciting. And, you know, that will bring life into – 
mm-hmm. the Pittsburgh ballpark, which I like. And, you right. know, their rotation's not terrible. Um, Mitch I, Keller. It's just kind of, can they do enough? Mitch Keller's right. solid. Uh, it's just, can the other guy stay healthy and mm-hmm. be good? I mean, a guy like Bailey Falter, you know, had moments with the Phillies where he pitched well. Obviously, mm-hmm. last year he struggled and then ended up getting moved. Pitched a few decent games for the Pirates, ended up getting hurt after that. But he slayed it um, to be in the rotation as well this year. So, yeah. It's the good order, to see the old the order, school teams, the Reds and the Pirates, back into it again. You know, it's like yeah, when the, I was a kid. The order you could kind of pull out of a hat. So, I mean, who knows? I mean, I'll just for the sake of being a little different, we'll go Cubs, Reds, Cardinals. Okay. And then just kind of whoever's left. Figure it out. I mean, <laughs> Brewers, Pirates. Like, I think that will be a division for a while. I don't think there's a team that will be buried and out by the end of April there. Yeah, I think they're going to be all neck and neck. Like, 87 wins can win that division easily, 86, something like that. But now we move on to the West. I don't think there's any question who's going to win the West out there. They're, everyone's – Colorado I've, Rockies, baby. The Colorado Rockies are going to – now. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people predict the Dodgers to win 109 this year. Like, it's insane. So, yeah, I have the Dodgers winning the West. And um, I think I had I was going with San Diego, and at the last minute, I bailed on them. Um, I think losing yeah, – they lost Snell. I, I, I think San Francisco is going to be slightly better than the Padres. And Arizona, you know, with Corbin Carroll um, – and now they picked up Jordan Montgomery, so they have Merrill Kelly, Zach Gallen, and Montgomery. I think those three teams will make the playoffs, the Dodgers, the Diamondbacks, and the Giants. I don't know what order that's going to be in, but definitely Dodgers first, and Arizona and San Fan fighting for second and third, and I got them being in the playoffs. Yeah, it's a, it's a loaded division for sure. The the shortest bet might be the Rockies to finish dead last there because they're just, <laughs> they got a ways to go. Obviously, everyone expects the Dodgers to win that division. It's definitely possible if it stays close enough and they have some issues. Like, I mean, it wouldn't completely shock me if Arizona or San Francisco managed to just knock, beat them out a little bit. But I mean, I would be surprised, generally speaking. Yeah. The problem with the Dodgers last year is their entire rotation was decimated with injuries. They had nothing left in the postseason. Yeah. You know, we saw them just had nothing. Uh, I would have preferred to face them in the NLCS last year. Yeah. You, you could just see it. They had nothing Easily. left. The Phillies would have. They would have crushed them offensively. Now, hey, you never know. A guy like a Mookie Betts could have taken over the series. Freddie Freeman, maybe they would have outhit the Phillies, um, but the Phillies would have gotten their hits for sure. But the, yeah. you know, the Dodgers. You look at one, two, three: Mookie Betts, Otani, and Freddie Freeman. I mean, that's just that's a that's video insane. game type of one, two, three. And then you think about Will Smith, who just Will got Smith. the ten-year extension, who's yep. among the best catchers in baseball. Max Muncie, who I'm not a huge Max Muncie fan, but. He's a huge power hitter, 35, 40 home runs. And then that, that way they can get away with a guy like Jason Hayward, who's kind of an afterthought in baseball, but they got production out of him last year at a, mm-hmm. a veteran, lower salary. Yeah. A James Outman, who's a talented young player. Teoscar Hernandez, he's going to strike out 200 times, but he's also probably going to hit 25 to 30 home runs. Yeah. And Gavin Lux, I know Gavin Lux, we kind of in the hobby joke about him because he was one of those hyped rookies in 2020. So he's got, you know, 20,000 PSA 10 cards out there. But I mean, this is a guy with a ton of talent. Like he has a yeah. talent to be a all-star type of player. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that'll happen, but buried down in the nine hole, no pressure. I mean, he's not like a automatic out necessarily. Now things mm-hmm. could go well for him. Things could go bad, but like, I mean, that's a really good one through nine. And then mm-hmm. of course a rotation where, you know, you don't even know at some point, I guess Clayton Kershaw will jump it jump into it. Obviously they need Yamamoto to get uh, right, but Glass now looked great in his first start. Bobby Miller is a really good young pitcher. So fantastic lineup. The Giants obviously improved a lot, um, bringing in Matt Chapman and um, uh, Jung Ho Lee. But, uh, you know, they're a weird offensive team. They seem to get production. They also brought in Jorge Soler for some much needed uh, yeah, that's power. But, but that rotation, I mean, Logan Webb, Blake, and uh, Blake Snell, that's a really good one, too. Jordan Hicks, yep. I know a lot of people are high on him. He's going to get a chance to start. Kyle Harrison, a young pitcher. 
who a lot of people have high hopes for. So like they'll be in it. And I kind of agree. <laughs> the Padres are talented, but they lost Juan Soto. They lost Blake Snell. I don't know if they have enough pitching. I know they acquired uh, Dylan Cease. So, I mean, they have a pretty solid one through four rotation. And the lineup is still obviously pretty good. If a guy like Cronenworth can bounce back, I know he had a good second game of the season. Mm -hmm. But uh, Tatis, Bogarts, Machado, they still have a lot of star power. Um, Ha Sung Kim was actually awesome last year, and a lot of people just didn't yeah. notice. Um, and Paredes, yeah. isn't it Paredes on their team too? Uh, is... yeah. And they have the center fielder, Jackson Merrill, who looks mm -hmm. like a really good young player. So, like, they're going to be right there as well. I, I like the Diamondbacks too, though. I mean, they showed me a lot last year, unfortunately. I think they have a really solid uh, rotation, some good arms in the pen. And kind of just that professional pain in the ass lineup. I mean, you look at it and you go, yes. right, Corbin Carroll's a stud. And the other guys are kind of like, eh, they're not that scary. But then they manage to just put a few balls in play, get guys over, get guys in. So I mean, yeah. I think I go team. Yeah. I think I go Dodgers, Diamondbacks, and then Giants, Padres. You can kind of flip it. I think they'll be neck and neck, and then whoever plays well in the last right. week will uh be in so the third spot. Your six teams, my six teams, I have the Dodgers, Atlanta, Cincinnati, three division winner, Phillies, Arizona, and San Fran. I think your only difference would be Cincinnati. You probably were going with Chicago. Yeah, I think I said the Cubs. So. Okay. So do but, you but still I, have San Fran in the playoffs too? I think I'm going to go ahead and say that we get a – a two, two, and two action this year. We get oh, a okay. wild card team from each one. We'll mix it up a little bit. Okay. So then it could be Chicago, St. Louis. Chicago. I think Chicago, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And then, and then uh, Phillies, Braves, Diamondbacks, yeah. and Dodgers. Okay. All right. Let's quickly go to the American League, the East. Um, I'm going different on the East. Everyone's picking Baltimore. I'm going with the Yankees. I know they lost Garrett Cole for like two months, but I think Nestor Cortez is going to have a better year. I think Carlos Rodon is going to have a much, much better year this year. I don't know why. I just think that. And people are sleeping on Marcus Stroman to kind of solidify that rotation that's going to really help them. Um <laughs> Everyone's going with Baltimore. That's the hot team, you know, with the young pro and they're good. Don't get me wrong. I love the I love seeing the Orioles, the Reds, the Pirates, the Orioles, all those teams I grew up with in the 70s. I love seeing all those old school teams back. But I for some reason I'm going with the Yankees in the East. Um and I have Baltimore second. And then I have Toronto third, Tampa Bay fourth, and Boston fifth. What do you think? Um, I think I think this is another division that literally could go so many different ways. I think one through four could go. I, I think there's endless possibilities because there's four teams that I wouldn't be shocked if they found their way to the World Series. Yeah. Um, I actually have been thinking on the Yankees for quite a while. Now I had second thoughts when Garrett Cole went down. I'm going out in the assumption that he's going to get back and pitch, you know, through it maybe even with a little more rest, but I actually do like the Yankees as well. You know, obviously health pending, but that Soto judge, I think Stanton might have a little bit of a resurgence. I think Glaber Torres most likely hitting at the top of the lineup. We'll see He's more playing pitches good again. Yeah. I actually like their offense a lot. And you forget about a guy like Rizzo and Volpe. Like they have a really good offense. Yeah. Stroman was a solid addition. Um, I actually agree. I like the Yankees. Mm -hmm. I love the Orioles. I think they're loaded with talent. Um, they could win 105 games, but I kind of also expect them to come down to earth a little bit more this year. Mm -hmm. um, again, everything went right last year, but I, I think they'll be in the mid nineties win team. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like the blue Jays and I like Tampa. Like those are all teams I expect to win more than 85 games. I think that you're going to have a batch of four teams that are going to win 85 to 95 games there. Yeah. I, I love Toronto. I love Toronto's offensive lineup, but the pitching is very suspect. I had uh, Manoa winning the Cy Young last year and he, was terrible and Gavin Galsman, who I really like, is already having arm fatigue. So there, there's a lot of questions with Toronto's rotation, but their lineup. I mean, you know, I love um, 
Vigio and I love Bo Bichette. I mean, they're they're lot and Vladiger Guerrero's got to have a bounce back. Well, near. all those guys, all those Blue Jays guys are also coming up on those, you know, arbitration yeah. contract years too. So there's a little extra motivation there as well. But I, you know, I I really do like all four teams. Tampa Bay is one of those weird teams that every year you're like, uh, they didn't really add much. They, you know, maybe lost a player or two. Can they really still compete? And they always seem to. Like a bad year for them is like an 83 win rebuilding year. Yeah. The Red Sox, again, I, the Red Sox, I know everyone's crapping on them because they really haven't done a lot, but like they're not horrific. No. Like I still expect Devers. them to finish in last place, but like that doesn't, I don't think they're going to be one of those 58 win last place teams. No. I think they might be a 77 win last place team. They could be over five. Every team in that division could be over 500. The Red Sox can finish in last and have 82 wins. I can yeah, easily actually, see that. Absolutely possible. The Red Sox were in the central. They'd be competing for a division yeah. title. Speaking of the central, here's my biggest shocker pick. I'm And JT Triple Crown at 24 is going to love me for this. People are going to be like, why? I'm going with the Detroit Tigers to win the central. Minnesota finishing second. Cleveland third. Cleveland's offense is good, but they're pitching. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Kansas City is going to be a little bit better, and Chicago is going to be last. I'm going with Detroit. I like they picked up Mark Canna. They got Jack Flattery. Um, there's young players coming up. Spencer Torkelson's getting better each year. That, that division's really up for grabs. Anybody from one to three can win that division. But I'm going to go out on the limb and go against the grain and go Detroit. Yeah, I think I'm going to go by default and go with the Twins again um, just because they have a prof- – now, they scare me because of health. Carlos Correa, Royce Lewis, Byron Buxton, these are all guys who yeah. seem to have injury issues. But if they were all healthy, I think they would be able to definitely flirt with 90 wins. I, I like the rotation to a degree. I think Pablo Lopez is very good. Joe Ryan is solid. Um, the back end has a chance to be good. Again, not – necessarily proven um i'd agree the tigers are continuing to improve i mean they got that dead terrible contract in javi baez obviously is the ability to bounce back he was atrocious in spring training but other than that they have a lot of youth a lot of talent um their leadoff hitter may be our boy uh matt veerling so it'd be nice to see him uh get a chance to compete in the postseason again Casey their, Wise coming up. Their, yeah, their rotation looks really strong. So I, I do like the Tigers. I actually like Kansas City probably more than most teams, mm-hmm. uh, most people. Um, you know, Bobby Witt, I think, is uh, – He's a I potential mean, MVP candidate down yeah, the he's, road. He's becoming a, a Kansas City legend to a degree. Or mm-hmm. You know, obviously the football team's getting most of the attention right now, but, like, he has a chance to be an all-time Royal. I, I – I don't mind their lineup, and I think their starting rotation has a chance to be better than people would think. Uh, and Cleveland's another one of those teams; they're they're not quite the Rays, but they seem to find a way to compete. Like I, you know, they might be an eighty-two win team. Maybe they could win eighty-six. They're like in that range where they're definitely, uh, you know, competitive. So I, I think all four of those teams have a shot. Um, it's a tough division. You're yeah, right. I mean, Both these central divisions are. <laughs> They could go so any tough. different way. Yeah, you could pull them out of a hat and not feel that yeah. bad about your pick. And, I mean, the White Sox still have some talent with Robert and Moncada and Jimenez, but these are guys that just every year we think are going to break out. Now, Luis Robert did have a good year last year, but generally speaking, this is just a team that seems to never be able to break through and get past expectations. And I, I think they got some – issues in the rotation and pitching wise. So I expect them to finish last, but you never know. I mean, yeah. One of the other teams could have a struggle. They could have a little better year, but it's and gonna be an interesting division. We're going to the last division, the AL West. Last another, year another tough division. And it is actually it actually it is. Um the team that won the World Series who didn't win the division last year, I do have them winning the division this year, and that's the Texas Rangers. I have the Houston Astros finishing in second place, and I have the Seattle Mariners finishing in third. And I actually have Oakland playing better this year and finishing in fourth, and the Angels are going to suck. I think the Angels are going to finish dead last. I wouldn't be surprised if the Angels trade Trout. I'm not saying to the Phillies, but the Angels are going to be – them and the Rockies, I really think the Angels are going to suck. 
And I got the Oakland A's of all teams being better than the Angels this year. And yeah, um, and I have the top three teams all in the playoffs, Texas, Houston, and Seattle. All three. Definitely a possibility. Um, I have a hard time. I think at this point, not picking the Astros just because they've obviously been consistently so good, but obviously um, there's a lot of competition too. I think I'm going to take the Astros to win the division. Um, still a solid rotation, really strong lineup. A guy like Jordan Alvarez who just continues to get better, but I do like Texas. Um, sure. They lost some pitching, but they still have a decent pitching staff and their lineup is unbelievably loaded. Now they're adding a young guy, Wyatt Langford, um, Josh Young gets his second year. Garcia's made himself a household name. Evan Carter's going to have a f- full year. Corey Seager's an MVP Seager. candidate. I think yep. someone in this room might pick him to yep. win the MVP. Marcus Shh. Simeon. I mean, that lineup is loaded. So Adolis they'll be Garcia. right there. And, you know, the Mariners, the Mariners are an interesting team because I don't think they'll be dominant in the regular season, but if yep. they get into the playoffs, I think they That's could, exactly right. I think they could, you know, really wreak havoc because their yep. lineup has some pieces. I mean, you look at their lineup and you have a Julio Rodriguez, who's obviously a sensational player, one of the faces of baseball. And then you have a guy like JP Crawford, who's a good solid player. You have a Cal Raleigh who's a good solid player. And then after that, you just have a lot of pieces that fit in that, mm-hmm. you know, can help them, but they're rotate. They have three guys who could win the Cy Young. Yep. And then their four and five guys are solid and their bullpen yep. solid. So like I like the Mariners. I think they're probably going to finish third, but I think they will compete for the wild card spot. If they get in, they got a shot. Um, I'll take the Angels for fourth, even though I think they're <laughs> obviously have a lot of work to do. I just think that the athletics are going to do whatever they have to to be as bad as possible. <laughs> I think that's what the owner I think that's what the owner wants. I would be surprised. I they do have a few solid players, as uh, Zach Galoff and Estui Ruiz, and even Andahar, I believe, is going to play for them this year, and he'll have a shot to, yep. uh, you know, if he can be healthy, maybe get a full year in the big leagues. So we'll but, see, yeah. but that's kind of how I see it. Uh, that's how exactly I feel about Seattle. I think for the long stretch of the season, they're going to be just there. But come playoff time, I think you're going to see something. I think you could see like a 2022 Phillies-type team where they just hang around all year. And then there you go. I think that's the American league version of the 22 Phillies right there is the Seattle. So uh, with that said, I'm going to say my, my playoff predictions for the six teams in the American league. I have the Yankees, Detroit, Texas, and then the other wild cards. I have Houston, Seattle, and Baltimore. So those are my six teams, the Yankees, Baltimore, Detroit, Texas, Houston, Seattle. Um, I don't think Toronto or Tampa gets in or Minnesota, but I that's who I have. So, Yeah, I think my, my, mine would then be the Yankees, Orioles, Minnesota, Twins, and then Astros. Texas and Seattle. Texas and Seattle. But, I, you know, I do think that the Rays and Blue Jays will certainly be right there. Yep. Um, just falling a little bit short. And after all that, who I have going to the World Series, I'm going to skip all the preliminaries of the playoff brackets. I'm going to agree with our boy, Ed Wesker Griff. And I have, we just talked about Seattle. I have them finishing in third, and I have them going to the World Series against our team, the Fighting Phils. That's where I'm going with. What do you think? Who do you like? It's hard to think, tell, I know. I think, I think there's endless possibilities. I will go with the... Um, the Dodgers versus the Yankees in a oh wow uh, old team, school some classic old school teams I could see that and we'll see it's a possibility maybe not certainly hope to be wrong if I got to put what I want to see I would go with something like you picked yeah yeah and a couple award winners right here we were talking about Seattle's pitching my American League Cy Young I'm going with Logan Gilbert from Seattle. My AL MVP, Corey Seager. My NL Cy Young, I think everybody's going with Spencer Strider. I like that pick a lot. And and again, I'm not going homerism here. I just think Bryce Harper, he's fully healthy. He's relaxed at first base. I think Harper's going to have a monster year. 
I think he's going to hit about 33, 34 bombs. He, he's never a 40 plus homer guy. 33, 34 homers, 105, 106 RBIs, 300 average. You're very close to it. And there's your MVP. Yeah, I mean, he'll especially have a good year if the guys behind him can hit consistently or if yeah. he gets guys on base. Um, if you notice a lot in the last couple of years, he's hit a lot of solo home runs because guys, yeah. the only time he sees pitches is when no one's on base. Um, right. He's, he, I don't know if it was two years ago or if it was last year. I know one of the years he saw the least amount of pitches in the strike zone yep. and he still did damage. I mean, that's how good he can be. So yeah. we'll see. Um, you know, picking the awards is as big of a crapshoot as that's picking crap the uh, divisions and such. I like a Seattle pitcher too. I actually think Luis Castillo is going to have a monster year nice, for, yeah. for the Mariners. Um, I have a hard time not picking Spencer Strider, but I think his counterpart on opening day has got a shot as well. I actually like Zach, Zach Wheeler. Wheeler okay. I will go with Strider because I think he's going to strike out a, a few more and maybe get a little more uh, offensive backing consistently to rack up the wins. Uh, MVPs, I think Ed's boy Juan Soto, that contract year, I think he wants that uh, all-time contract. I think he will – see his home run total jump a little bit with that short porch. I think with Aaron Judge, if Aaron Judge can stay healthy and is behind him, I mean, yeah. I think you'll see the home run total. He, you know he's going to have the off uh, on-base percentage, the batting average. Um, the RBI total won't be that meaningful, but I, I think he'll um, have a really big year. National mm -hmm. League-wise, I mean, honestly, I think it's going to be either Mookie Betts or Otani now. Obviously, these guys, and with Freddie Freeman there, maybe they actually do some damage to each other because they take votes away. But I'm going to go with Shohei Otani, assuming he plays the full season and doesn't get the <laughs> Pete Rose treatment. I, I think, you know, being able to focus on just offense, having a guy in front of him on base all the time, having an awesome hitter behind him, I think yeah, is actually going to help him. Numbers, I yeah. mean – Think about this. Him and Trout, first of all, didn't play with each other as much as you would think over the last few years because yeah. one or the other was consistently hurt. And the rest of that lineup, I mean, people like to rip on the Angels for pitching, but the last couple of years, their pitching wasn't good enough, but it wasn't as bad as it used to be. Their offense was horrific. They had nothing between those besides those two. Yeah. So I think that will help Otani a lot. Did you go rookies of the years or no? Uh, I'm going to go with this that uh... – it's for the American League. It's Churio or Langford uh, from well, Texas. Chur Churio in the it, NL with the Brewers. Brewers. I'm sorry, in the National League, Jackson Churio, and I'm going to go with that Wyatt Langford in Texas. Yeah, I'll just copy there. you and do the same. But I know there's also a lot of other good young players. A guy like Jackson Holiday will be interesting to see if he comes up um, mm -hmm. early enough for uh, the Orioles. They obviously have so much good young talent. Um, so we'll see. Now, MVP in the American League, I like how you I, – I told Ed, I said, I really think Soto is going to have a good – I really do think Soto is going to have a good year. And that porch with Judge hitting in front of him, I, how can you not? But my backup after after Corey Seager, I really think J-Rod, Julio Rodriguez, is going to have an MVP type year. He's going to be carrying that team all year. I really think you could see that kid hit 40 homers this year and – I have Seager and, and Julia Rodriguez, slight edge to Seager. Uh, but, yeah, um, Julio Rodriguez is my backup. Now, National League, I really didn't think of a backup after Harper. <laughs> I just think Harper is just – he missed two months last year and came in and just, like – I'm like, man, this guy just doesn't miss a beat. He just hits and he just he grinds it out and he hits line drives in the gaps. He's clutch. You give him a full year with uh, now instead of Bohm hitting cleanup, you're going to have Real Muto. So he's not going to be missing pitches now. He's going to get see a little bit better pitches. And in Citizens Bank Park, if he stays healthy all year, I got Harper and the, the my other league was either Seeger or Julio. So we'll see, but I'll slight edge to Seeger. But either way, um, it's going to be an exciting year. There are yeah, so tomorrow. many good, there are so many good young players in baseball. There's so many. You know, future Hall of Famers, star yep. players that have been a ton of star power. It, it's a damn shame that Major League Baseball doesn't do a better job of marketing their stars right. because, you know, 
there's just so many of them. There's so much great talent. It's so fun to watch the games. It's so mm-hmm. fun to, uh, you know, watch the highlights of the games you didn't have time to watch. It, it's awesome. I love uh, my nephew is eight years old, and I was talking to him the other day, and I kind of just went through t- team by team and was asking, oh, who's your favorite player on this team? And he's just rattling off these good young That's players. That's awesome. And I'm like, man, I know there's a lot of people, you know, in the card community that are missing out. It's like, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm sorry, but some of the best talent in baseball history is playing right now. There were greats in the 1800s, the early yeah. 1900s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. But there's just as many incredible players now from across the world, and it's awesome. And yeah. I'm excited to see where it all goes this year, and it's all starting tomorrow. And then, of course, Friday, uh, Phillies Braves starting it off with a bang. Uh, I think this is going to be a big year. I mean, we didn't two years ago. We had the strike threat. There was a delay last year. We had the World Baseball Classic. This nothing this year. Everybody had a full off season. Yeah, it's an actual spring training. It's an actual baseball. spring training. That's no why bullshit. I think no, this year no is co- going to be a no COVID, big year. No, no, no COVID. World baseball Classic. None of that. Lockouts. All that bullshit. This is going to be. I really, really think this could be a monster year for a lot of players. So I'm looking forward to it. So here we are, less than 24 hours. Hope everyone enjoyed this. Mike, thanks for coming on. You got um, it, Ray. Go Phils. And maybe we'll see the Phillies and the whoever, Mariners, in the World Series. So until then, guys, like I always say, have fun with it. Go Phils. See you guys next year. See ya.